Okay, so today we're doing part two of how to make fiberglass bodywork. So today is going to be the actual fiberglassing itself, including how to make a female mold from fiberglass and how to lay up the actual part inside of that, which you can make in fiberglass or carbon fiber, it doesn't matter, they both will work the same way. Okay, so to make the fiberglass, you'll need some resin. I'm using an epoxy because it doesn't react with foam. I'm also using a standard hardener, which gives an intermediate cure time of about 20 minutes, which is good because I've got simple geometry, but if you want a more complex geometry, you probably want a slower cure time. You'll need a measuring jug and possibly a set of scales, some mixing cups, some PVA. Now, um, this isn't PVA, it's in PVA glue. It's a different type of PVA. I'll show you what it does later, but basically for now all you need to know is it helps with mold release. Some acetone for cleaning stuff up. Some really sharp scissors for cutting your fiberglass or carbon fiber or whatever you're using. Uh, a stirrer, that's the yellow thing, just for mixing stuff up. A tub of mold release there. Uh, it's a wax sort of thing that you put on the mold. Uh, a whole bunch of paint brushes that you're happy with getting rid of. I got these really, really cheap. Some spreaders for spreading your resin around. Also be prepared to get rid of those. An agitator, which is basically like a steel roller. It helps with just mixing the fiber and the resin together. And a lot of gloves, because trust me, you'll be going through a lot of these. Okay, so the first step to prepare your mold is to coat it with a release wax. This basically fills microscopic imperfections and provides a surface that will release more cleanly. So to apply your wax, you can get a bit of sponge or something similar. I just use the bit that's in the top of the container, even though you're probably not meant to. Get a bit on there and then just apply it onto the mold. And once it goes on, wipe it off immediately. Depends on the type of wax you're using, but check your instructions. Some of them need to be wiped off immediately, other ones can sit for a bit. So after about six coats of wax, you should have a nice smooth and waxy finish. Okay, so after you've finished your wax coats, what you want to do is cover the mold with PVA. Some guys don't do this, I like to do it. It gives a really smooth finish and makes it easy to release. So it's not PVA glue, it's a different type of PVA. It's this blue stuff here. You can get it in blue or clear or sometimes green. I find the blue is the best because it's the most visible. So what you do is you want to coat your mold in a thin layer of it. Now you can do this with a rag or a paintbrush, but if you've got a spray gun, it's the best way of doing it and that's how I'm going to do it. Apply three or four thin even coats of PVA, giving time for it to dry in between. Cut your fiberglass in the size to match your part, then mix up your resin when you're ready to go. Pour down an initial coat of just resin and spread it out so you get a nice smooth finish. Allow it to dry just a little bit so it's still quite wet, and then put on the first layer of fiberglass. Pour down some resin on the top of this layer, and then spread it around using brushes, scrapers, or rollers, whatever you find is best. You can then use a metal agitator to roll out any bubbles you see and get it nice and smooth. Don't forget to use the acetone to periodically clean the equipment you're using. Once you finish layup, cut and release any edges that are free, and then you're ready to pop the mold. Work your way around the mold edges with a firm plastic rod so it doesn't scratch it, and then you can wiggle the mold up to try and break it free. Once the PVA is fully separated from the mold, you should be able to lift up your part. To get the PVA off, just rinse your part with water and a sponge. Then prep your mold by waxing it again and start to cut your fiberglass. Because this is the actual part, we'll try to make it out of one continuous piece. To deal with corners like this one here, tape up the corner and cut down the line so that the fiberglass can go around the surface without warping and bubbling. Then repeat the process that we used on the other part. We're using a better quality twill fiber for this part because it looks better and is stronger. You can continue to add more layers as you see fit, keeping in mind that more layers will be stiffer and stronger, but also heavier. I find two layers works best for most general purpose parts. 
means. To finish your part, you can use a fine blade on a jigsaw and it gives quite a good finish. Make up some tabs for whatever you're planning on mounting to, and then use the tabs to drill a hole through the fiberglass. Keeping in mind that you should vacuum it in order to stop any dust from popping up. So I just thought I'd show you some pieces after they've been put in. So this is the dash that I showed you the tutorial on. It's a bit blue because I didn't wait quite long enough for the PVA to dry before putting the, um, the epoxy down, but it doesn't affect its strength at all. And then we've got this bonnet piece here, which you can see is nice and white because I let the PVA dry long enough. Here's an example of a different way you can make a mold out of chop strand mat here. I don't like chop strand, it's quite messy, but it is very cheap and it does very well at getting around sharp corners and things like that. So you can make parts like that without too much difficulty. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was useful for you and I'll see you next time.